Hi, my name is Elle Billing. I'm a chronically ill queer femme, and I'm tired. I'm here this episode and every episode to dig at the roots of our collective fatigue, explore ways to direct our care in compassionate and sustainable ways, and harness creative expression to heal ourselves and our world. And welcome to HURF, Radical Care in a Late Capitalist Techscape. My guest today is Patrick Farnsworth. Patrick Farnsworth is a long-form interviewer, occasional writer, and host of Last Born in the Wilderness, a podcast he has produced for the better part of a decade. He is also a co-host of Attack and Dethrone Godcast and the author of We Live in the Orbit of Beings Greater Than Us, a compilation of close to 30 interviews originally aired on Last Born and interlaced with commentary published through Gods and Radicals Press. Patrick's work explores a diverse set of topics through an overarching framework that is undeniably collapse-aware. He grew up in occupied Shoshone Bannock territory, southern Idaho, and became politicized in his teenage years, beginning with personal exploration into the roots of United States imperialism, capitalism, settler colonialism, and white supremacy. Inevitably, his focus turned toward the intersecting crises of catastrophic climate disruption and global ecological collapse, the Anthropocene. In attempting to further understand these subjects, he began to produce Last Born in the Wilderness, a podcast featuring discussions with a wide variety of individuals exploring these difficult subjects in their own respective fields. Patrick's political and spiritual philosophy is explicitly anti-fascist, anti-capitalist, anti-racist, ecologically centered, and animist. Building solidarity and doing the sacred work in spite of the inevitable is still worth it. He currently resides on Semiyamu land near the Salish Sea along the Washington-Canadian border. I'm excited to have him on the podcast today. Hello, Patrick. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I mean, I already said hi, right? But we weren't <laughs> recording yet, so I have to say hi again. And that's always a little awkward to get started. <laughs> yeah, it's always the, I do the same thing. I talk, sometimes it, it goes exactly like what we were just doing, where I or the other person I'm speaking to, we're already getting into the subject or it's already, the conversation's getting rolling and I'm like, wait, wait, I haven't even hit record yet. Yeah. Um, so let's just start from there, you know? And so, yeah. Um, I had one interview where when I hit record and we were already like laughing hysterically. Yeah. And like, I was sort of in the middle of a story and like, that's where we started the episode. Yeah. And so I had to backtrack a little bit and say, so we were just talking about. Yeah. How neurodivergent yeah. people do this thing. And right. now I have to tell you this other story <laughs> because it won't <laughs> let go of my brain. Yeah. No, you got to catch everyone else up to speed. It's almost like you remember that the listeners are are participating in the conversation, even if it is from an outsider or like a almost a passive listening uh, perspective. So you have to be, of course, mindful of that when you're recording a podcast. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're all in this conversation, too. This is what we were just discussing. You just came into the room, and this is what we're laughing about, you know. Let me peel back seven layers of backstory. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of inside jokes, and I have to peel back the inside jokes and what they all mean over the years. <laughs> right. so, yeah, there's levels of meaning here. But yeah, no, I'm really I'm really happy to be here. I was been thinking a lot about this and, and your podcast and being invited on here, and it's like a full circle in some ways. Yeah, I was on your podcast. I was trying to think how many years ago that was. How many years have you been doing Last Born? Well, I was thinking about this too, because I think we may have recorded, I think we did like two maybe podcasts. And I think- We did two with just me. And then I was on again with Michael and Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. Because they were doing TEDx Twin Falls. Um, yeah, it was probably in the 2016-ish time frame, That's, maybe 2017 even. That sounds so, about right. Because I switched yeah. from teaching elementary to secondary in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the episodes we did was about the interesting position of teaching um, sexual health education. Um, to students who are yeah. deaf, hard of hearing, deaf right. and disabled, and how like some of my colleagues had been shirking their responsibility, like the health teacher who mm -hmm. wasn't, who just skipped the sex ed chapter, and I was like, "You did what? <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. I shouldn't yeah. do that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that was I mean, that year. Yep. yep. <laughs> so that was 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I think I started the podcast. I mean, technically I started the podcast years before that I had come up with the name of it and, but you know, as, as I am, I, I can be a little unfocused. I have this sort of creative outburst of, of I have this idea and I really want to bring it into existence and make it a thing and see where it goes. And then I get run up against some walls of, of maybe not wanting to uh, take risks or put in the uh, attention required to get something going. So that was like that for a while when I started mm -hmm. it, but back right around. Yeah. When I, when I interviewed you and had a conversation with you on the podcast, that was really when I started doing what I do now, which is interviewing people and releasing them as podcast episodes and yeah, that was about 2016 ish, I think, is really when I jumped in and bought some audio equipment and wanted to figure out what I was doing. And, and you were obviously someone that I had developed a relationship with, a friendship with. We were both living in the same place at the same time. So, you know, um, you had a lot of great perspectives that you could bring to, to me just to listen to and, and to learn from. And uh, yeah, so it's been some time. I mean, we're yeah. in 2023 now, so we've known Holy each cow. other for a while. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> and, and we're not living, neither of us are living no. in the same, like in the, in Twin Falls anymore. We've moved, I think, almost in opposite directions. Yeah, you're in, yeah, we're like two time zones apart now. Yeah. Um, and, your, in and your podcast has evolved quite a bit, even mm -hmm. since you went into like the, the interviewing format. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of your perspectives have, they haven't completely changed but i think um some of your outlooks have softened a little bit at least from where i'm sitting yeah i mean the, your foundations are still pretty similar to where they were you know six years ago but yeah i think you're more hopeful it's kind of a weird thing in a, in I, a weird way because like you're <laughs> <laughs> like your the your perspective on the trajectory of the planet yeah is the same Mm -hmm, more or less for the yeah. most part yeah which mm -hmm. is we're in a in a crisis and things are not getting better yeah but correct me if i'm wrong but i think that yeah. your appreciation and perspective for humanity and the connections that we make is more positive now than it was maybe six or seven years ago yeah i think so i think when i first came into this i you could create, I feel like I've traveled in different circles, so to speak, these little like subcultural spaces and, you know, people get kind of uh, caught up in, I think, what are traps when it comes to how they perceive and understand their reality and their relationship to the world. And I think when I first started, I, I would definitely, yeah, I mean, my foundational kind of premise was global climate disruption is getting progressively worse. It is an accelerating process. It's leading to all kinds of outcomes that can be in some form or another be anticipated. And I've, you know, basically played around with the idea that human beings are on a path to self-destruction and it's destroying the more than human world. And we're in the midst of this global ecological crisis and all this stuff is true and scientifically based but of course the conclusion that i've drawn and i think others have as well is this leads to some kind of human extinction event blah 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 blah. it's all very dire very doomy very kind of dark for a while yeah yeah no for sure yeah and you know yeah and I, was... I mean and i have to monitor my consumption of news for sure. that reason because mm -hmm. it can be very dark yeah, no, and and same for me. I reach certain points where I'm like, I really don't want to think about this right now, and I need to take care of myself, and I need to focus on what's near to me that I love, and that right now is you know staying, um, you know, being at home with my partner and and just taking care of ourselves because it's like. I don't know what the point is of saying all these things is anymore. I'll be frank. Um, and my focus, and when you say it's softened, I think that's true in one way because I'm not harping on that anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. I don't know why I, we need to focus on that specifically. We just need to kind of identify how we want to be in this time. And that's that's really what I've been thinking a lot about. And and also, I think in that sphere of um, kind of doomer spheres, like everything's collapsing, everything's going to fall apart, and this is all leading to this inevitable conclusion, blah, blah, blah is it's very like it's a western i mean use a lot of terms here but like western kind of colonialist sort of framework because what happens is you look at what's happening and then you automatically project so you you exist in this culture and within this framework 
and you think we treat each other horribly and our systems are awful and we're destroying the natural world that's extrapolated to every human being ever and it's assumed that that's just the way people are this is human nature and human beings are a cancer and a virus and all this stuff and as i've done the podcast more and more became more curious i realized mm, this is a product of a culture not people this is not a human thing this is just a mode of existence and it's really only emerged in various contexts over the past few hundred years 500 years or so or maybe potentially a thousand or more because of the roman empire and things like this but it, the point is just to say human beings are not one thing and it's unfortunate and tragic that the dominant culture on this planet is so destructive and that we're part of it but this is not an inevitability so i push back against the misanthrop misanthropes the human hating element because i i don't hate human beings yeah you know yeah. and that that was something that we emailed about when we were prepping mm -hmm. for this um this week too and i think it came up for me especially during well what we thought was just going to be the height of the pandemic but it was the beginning <laughs> yeah um <laughs> during the the first part of lockdown when it was coming out that like the reduction in emissions and pollution and ways that some of the wilds were rewilding um while all of us were stuck inside it's like oh like covid isn't the virus people are the virus it's like mm -hmm. no 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> back, back up back up um mm -hmm. covid is a problem covid is mm -hmm. a virus okay number one number two like the problem isn't people it is our our choices like mm -hmm. it's our consumption habits and it's especially evident now with the insistence that everything's back to normal when it so very much isn't right um with like the triple demic that we're going through um yeah. with the combination of rsv influenza and new strains of covid mm -hmm. and we're being encouraged to just do everything back to normal and it's at the expense of people's lives and livelihoods and health on the altar of you know the economy mm -hmm. what does that even mean um mm -hmm. yeah. um and it's all and, and eco economies are choices and economies are invented things and yeah none of them are human nature they're choices right and i don't know where i'm going with this train of thought <laughs> that's okay I, um, I think, <laughs> well what i what i what i wanted to say is that COVID has been an enormous lesson and it's continuously affecting people and the fact that to me, I, I just wanted to, the way that I framed COVID on my podcast is that it is almost a, a microcosm of the broader global crisis because the pandemic is ecological. It, it emerges from the ecological crisis and um, how we're reacting and trying to address or not address COVID um, is indicative of how the culture is addressing or not addressing climate disruption and the climate crisis, or excuse me, the uh, ecological crisis. Um, this, yeah, this insistence, this urgency of normal to get everyone back to where we were before 2020 is, <laughs> it's so hard. It's like, this has been one of the most challenging periods of the pandemic because you're insisting that the virus is real and it's, it's still killing people and disabling people and mm -hmm. I don't want to get it. And everyone is kind of being led or, or choosing to go back to a time that it just will never have again, you know? And so it's been very hard in just the most basic things of care for ourselves and for others, which is like wearing a mask that works, is seen as it's like, ugh, you know, people are like almost uncomfortable with that, you know? And so, yeah, it's been a very um, revealing and challenging time. Yeah. I know? think when you mentioned like how just wearing a mask, there's almost a stigma on people who mm -hmm. choose to wear masks now. And like, I'm reminded of um, when former President Trump was still in office and he had COVID and afterwards, a lot of his attitudes towards people with disabilities, they're just this fear of of illness and weakness and disability. Mm -hmm. And it's not just, it wasn't just him. It's really a cultural fear, dare I say hatred, um, mm -hmm. in some cases of weakness, um, of disability, of illness, of aging, mm -hmm. of all of the things that are just very human. 
because American archetypes are all very individualistic, very strong, very, you know, bootstrappy, rugged individuals who can overcome anything and you can do anything you put your mind to when really that's not the case. Yeah. And I think <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when it turned out that COVID wasn't going to go away quickly, wasn't something we were going to quickly get over and was something that was going to leave many people disabled for the rest of their lives. Masks are something that many of us need because of our health or disability status. It really becomes a thing people don't want to be associated with mm -hmm. because it's like a mark of being untouchable or undesirable, like of being associated with any of those like human frailties. Yeah, I think it was... Rochelle Walensky, the director of the CDC, I believe she said something, if it wasn't her, it was someone else, but something about masks being like the scarlet letter of the pandemic. It's a visual reminder that we are still in a pandemic. As much as we want to rhetorically or just sort of through behavior, uh, try to act as if it isn't real, um, it very much is. And it's a reality that's that's creating all kinds of problems. You know, it's, it's interesting for a capitalist system that requires workers to continue to throw themselves into their jobs and really not getting much out of it. I thought you were going to say throw themselves into the machine, into but the please machine. keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they're throwing, yeah, no, they are, and they have to, right? We're all forced to do this to some degree. But yeah, we're, we're, the, the stakes are very high for, for workers, and a lot of people are unable to work now. You know, there's millions of people that are out of, that, that can't really work because they have long COVID now, you know? And this is a, it's been described as a mass disabling event for, for a reason, and um it's it's hard. It's just yeah. <laughs> there's so much to say about it. I've tried covering it on the podcast over the years, and uh, I just continuously describe it because uh, it's been uh, it's it's an important subject to try to to make sense of and do it in a way that's compassionate. The question I always ask my guests, um, and I think now is a good time to ask it since we're talking about the sheer oh, of COVID and staying compassionate and things is like, how, how do you take care of yourself? Like not just COVID wise, but like in general, like how do you, that's not the question I usually ask, but I'm curious mm -hmm. how you practice like self and community care, but also mm -hmm. how have you received care this week? Hmm. Like in what ways have you received care? You know, um, I went to work yesterday and I came back and my fiance had made borscht. Uh, oh my gosh. A Russian soup. soup. Uh -huh. I've never had it before. Um, she just had this simple, this, I just like, I don't know. She wanted to make some borscht. <laughs> I'm like, okay, go Good for stuff. it. You know, we went shopping and bought some <laughs> veggies, root, root vegetables. Yeah. I was going to say, you got some beets. <laughs> yep. Yep. Very it's beet, a good winter very, soup. Yep. And I just, yeah, I came home and there was just this fresh you know new soup and i just tried it and it was so nourishing and good and and she also made beer bread and it was just really good and hearty food and made me feel very taken care of and loved and so that was an act of care um and we do that for each other you know we try to take care of each other and create a home and uh that requires, you know, making good food if you can. It is certainly a privilege to be able to do this, but I mean, we've created a nice cozy spot for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So in spite of the fact that we actually kind of lack community right now, in the sense of like actual physical community, mm -hmm. we are a bit isolated where we're living right now. There's practical reasons for that. Um, but nonetheless, it is isolating up here where we're at. And of course, pandemic stuff as well makes it difficult, but nonetheless, we're taking care of each other the best we can. And yeah. so, yeah, a way that I've been taken care of this week was by my partner. That's Making nice. borscht. <laughs> my, huh? the, like a couple weeks ago, my dad, we do a lot of our eating in the living room in front of the TV, just because mm -hmm. that's how you unwind. And my dad came into the living room with, it wasn't even a soup bowl. It was like a small serving bowl with like an entire can of soup in it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. That looks, that looks really good. He'd been shoveling yeah. snow, right? So what are you going right. to do? You're going to eat soup. Yeah. And I just, I felt so inspired that I went and I also ate a whole can of soup. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that was such a good idea. Yeah. And 
yeah, I've been kind of on a soup and tea thing lately. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know what? That bowl is the perfect <laughs> size. You can get your hands around it. You get the whole can of soup in there. Yeah. My dad's a smart man. Very wise. <laughs> well, I mean, those things matter so much, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it, it's the little things are the biggest things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think for my podcast, sometimes I'm so in my head and in this sort of abstract space, I get a little disconnected from what my body wants and needs. And um, just being more in that right now, this winter especially, has sort of demanded that of me. Mm -hmm. And um, really just being like, take care of yourself and stop worrying so much about things you can't control. And just really take care of your partner and be very attentive to their needs as well. I'm actually very loved right now, you know, and it's been very good, you know, for both of us to have this space for each other. Because honestly, I can't get into some of the details, but I really needed to help take care of my partner over the past couple of weeks too. So Mm -hmm. that act of service has been so beneficial for both of us. That's where it's at right now for me, as far as caring goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's really, that's really lovely. I mean, even if the circumstances of why it needed to happen were. Yeah. The. Yeah. Sometimes they are. I mean, sometimes the, I mean, a lot of times the reason I need extra care is because my brain isn't working Mm -hmm. or I have, you know, I have a migraine or whatever, but. Yeah. You had said before that you had just taken like a month off from doing some podcast stuff and Mm -hmm. kind of like a little sabbatical. Mm-hmm. Um, so are you going to be picking that back up now again? Yeah, I, I am. I have ideas for who to interview, but I think I'm um, something I've been really reflecting on is I've been doing this for a while and something that gets increasingly difficult is the fact that I'm doing this alone. Mm-hmm. You know, um, some of the most successful podcasts and not just successful in like how many listens they get or whatever. It's like the longevity of it, the kind of ability for them to have the energy to produce it. Um, comes from people who are working in groups. Uh, you're the two people. I know that you have Ricky. Yeah, uh, Ricky does my audio editing. Yeah, and I I don't have that. I just have me. So I'm I'm kind of obviously I'm collaborating with people to make an episode, but nonetheless, it's it's a lot of it's me, and I'm running up against the serious limitations of that right now. So I'm really having some big questions about how to proceed in a way that is sustainable. Uh, I don't have answers right now. But yes, I absolutely want to continue doing it in some way because I get a lot of fulfillment from from it. I'm I, I realize like you mentioned earlier, like my my point of view has maybe softened or changed a bit over the years. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this podcast is about me and my my journey. It's very self-centered, but it is about my journey, learning and understanding certain things. And in that process. Things are not as simple and and cut and dry as I may have believed or wanted to believe, oh, yeah. and uh, that's a that's a growth. That's that's just a person growing. So the direction I'm going in, it's like I started off talking about this one thing, and now it's expanded in all these different directions. And and so I there's this part of me that's a little self conscious, thinking are people going to want to listen to this. I'm not the same person I was two years ago or five years ago. But I I'm all, I'm also at this point where I don't really want to care about that because it's not really relevant and i'm just gonna do what makes sense for me to take care of myself you sound like an artist i'm gonna do what (laughs) makes sense to me i mean but that's good as to podcast being self-centered i think mine is too i mean i think Mm -hmm. we have to be a little bit ego driven to record ourselves and then listen back and edit it and then publish (laughs) it (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah you know i i told someone Um, that this is like half manifesto, half love letter for me. Um, Yeah. My first episode I talked about, you know, I didn't finish my master's degree. I didn't get to write my thesis. Um, And so this is what I'm doing instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, um, but unlike a thesis, which once it's done, it's, you know, kind of written in stone, this gets to evolve, you know, and so you get to evolve too, and you have, and that's still evolving. And I, The sustainability piece that you mentioned, you know, Ricky and I were talking about that from the very beginning because both of us have really limited personal, like, energy resources Mm -hmm. and striking that balance between what other people perceive as, like, 
an adequate amount of hustle or work ethic and what we actually can and want to invest in it. You know, I got to the point where like, I don't care what people think is hustle. I don't care about like podcast rank. I mean, I like seeing if yeah. I do actually pop high enough one week <laughs> mm -hmm. to actually break in the top 200. I think it's happened once. <laughs> yeah. And that was because I released two episodes the same day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, woohoo. Um, but those aren't the things that are meaningful to me. It's like making connections with people and interviewing people I find interesting and um, creating something that's meaningful to me and to the people who are listening. And that's the love letter part. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's really no point in doing the work if you're not feeling the way that you just described, at least in this kind of podcast that you're creating. Yeah. Co creating. And uh, as a recovering workaholic, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, um, re-evaluating what work ethic even means hustle and grind and all that just leaves such a poor taste in my mouth and yeah. i mean you and you were saying like well people even want to listen to your podcast now that you've changed so much i was watching old episodes of i mean they're all old episodes because friends went off the air forever ago but <laughs> friends mm -hmm. is syndicated and it's on late night i got really annoyed watching it with my mom last night because i'm like these people never changed yeah and i find them absolutely insufferable yeah. And that's how I know I'm in my 30s. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, oh, I know. yuck, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny thing, though, because in some ways we want to revisit shows that feel like they've been frozen in time. It could be yeah. a book or whatever. It was like, oh, these go back to these people. They act the same way, even though it's like nine seasons long, nine seasons long or whatever it is. It's yeah. like they're all the same and they're all going to deal with problems the exact same way. But man, if those people are dealing with the exact same way and there's an insufferability to how they're behaving, damn, you really want to write a show or have a show that actually involves people growing and changing and dealing with problems in a more way, a compassionate or, or mature way. And that feels like more gratifying and worth paying attention to and in any story. I mean, it doesn't have to be a TV show, but, you know, um, feeling like there's something changing there, it feels more genuine and real yeah. yeah like i hope our podcasts evolve like i hope mm -hmm. <laughs> we can look back and go oh well I, w I was doing okay for what i was doing but i'm glad that my views have changed and that i'm reevaluating how i do this yeah and uh, ultimately what's going to happen is like for me speaking for myself i've made a lot of connections over the years which has been gratifying but it's also I've developed more intuition and ability to recognize what people's motivations may be to do the kind of work they do. You, mm -hmm. I think I've had this sort of base level of trust that everyone's kind of in it for the same reasons, the same reason I'm in it. And I've learned over the years in a lot of hard ways that like, no, people are in it for a lot of different reasons that have nothing to do with making the world better or, or trying to in improve the situation in any way possible. So admittedly, part of taking care of myself has been learning how to spot manipulators and um, narcissists <laughs> and people who are a little, um, little, a little too self-involved in their yeah. own way. I, I've had to learn that. And I think especially this is one of the revealing things about the pandemic has been, oh, okay, I see where people's priorities really are mm -hmm. because we are living in a time where your behavior is very reflective of your attitudes about things, especially as a public figure. It's been very revealing to me. So an act of self-care has been learning how to navigate that and figure out who I want to give attention to. The pandemic for me, like along the same lines, oops, I talk with my hands and I always hit my mic. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> occupational hazard of being a dramatic former ASL teacher. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> just mm -hmm. smack yeah. everything. Um, has been like finding out who like closet eugenicists are. <laughs> yep. It's like, oh, I thought this person was cool, but they're not. They like eugenics. This is terrible. Yeah. Uh, and like people who don't even realize also that the things that they're saying are like, hey, psst, that's eugenics. They're like, no, it's not. Eugenics is no, like it encompasses more than just like forcibly sterilizing people. It mm -hmm. also is like not caring if like sick and disabled people die from a virus. Like that's right. bad. Like, yeah, I think it, it really um, 
accelerated maybe a trajectory certain people were going down anyway with their beliefs, but it's also a cultural thing. And culturally, we are, eugen- I mean, we're a society that's, I mean, eugenics came from the US. Oh, and absolutely. Was, and, 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 and imported or, or affected the trajectory of other movements in Europe, which eventually became fascism. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's not just to say, yes, it's not this sort of like it, uh, the, the Holocaust or all the things that led up to that. This certainly is a logical extreme, but nonetheless is um, that that is the extreme. And yeah, it is it's just manifest. one tentacle of yes. a many tentacle beast. Absolutely. And so, yeah, you know, I, I've certainly the pandemic for me has been learning why, regardless of the type of president, you know, presidential administration we may be, um, that we have, you know, why are these policies moving in this, these directions? And, uh, why has it always been this way too? It was like this Mm -hmm. even earlier on. What are the reasons for that? I mean, you could just give very like, what's because of capitalism, you know, it's just like, that's too simplistic. What's going on under the surface here. That's certainly an aspect of it. Um, and that, that led me to learn more about disability justice and, um, yeah, the fact that yes, deeply embedded eugenics, it's in the fabric of society. Unfortunately, yeah. even the so-called best and most well-intentioned people, truly on some level, believe that COVID is if you're strong enough, if you're healthy enough, you take care of yourself well enough, you take the right supplements, you work out, you do all these things, you'll you'll get through it and you'll be fine. And uh, it's just not true. <laughs> yeah. Or that you were meant to get through it, and that's yeah. And if you don't, well then. Yeah. I mean, the number of times it's been dismissed as like, oh, but those were people with pre-existing conditions. Like mm-hmm. somehow that's less tragic. Yeah. That over a million people have died. How many are we up to now? I um, one point one or one point two yeah. million in the U.S. Yeah. have died. But and then people are like, yeah, but how many of those had pre-existing conditions? It that doesn't make them less human, less full of inherent dignity, less important yeah. to their families. Like they're still mm-hmm. people. Yeah, and. A lot of people have these so-called pre-existing conditions and it has absolutely nothing to do with any sort of choices they made. It was something that... I mean, and even if it is part of a choice you made, that doesn't yeah, make exactly. less of a person yeah. like right, or exactly. less deserving of life, health, and care. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for, for instance, I um, am a former smoker. I've been on and off for years. I used to... I, I quit like last year and now I'm chewing like nicotine gum all the time. That's my middle ground, but I'm not mm-hmm. smoking anymore, which is great. Technically, that's like a pre-existing or, mm-hmm. or a, a comorbidity or whatever, right? Because I smoked for so long. If I got COVID, that probably would be bad for me in a way that um, other people who are non-smokers wouldn't experience. So I, I chose to smoke. You know, I, I, I obviously have that in my, uh, health history. So I made that choice. Nonetheless, I would feel awful if someone was like, well, you kind of brought it on yourself, didn't you? You know, you made this choice, you know, and you got to live with the con. And I'm just like, you know, there's so many ways in which we have, um, such a lack of understanding and compassion for other people and that Mm -hmm. we're really just not pulling through together. Yeah, and that, and as someone who's like, an, I'm, I'm a leftist, and I'm an anarchist slash communist or whatever. Ultimately, so we need to deal with these issues on a systemic level to make it better for everybody. And you know, we can't really deal with the problem on an individual level because this requires collective action. Yeah. It requires a collective effort. Got to keep on fighting for that, regardless of how far along we are in this pandemic. It's just a very challenging time. You're kind of, I don't know if that's coming across in my tone of my voice and how. Oh, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's. <laughs> so, what I'm, I'm curious, what do you, I mean, you talked about, you know, giving and receiving care with your partner, and um, you kind of took a break from the podcast for a while. And it, it, it is a challenging time, and there is a lot that can and does weigh on us you know um what kinds of things do you do to sort of balance i mean okay how do you balance out climate disruption and and ecological crises you don't it's still there but (laughs) (laughs) yeah um how do you when you're not screaming into the void (laughs) as those in our generation are tend to do um what kind of things do you do to add more like brightness to your to your life 
Like not to be dismissive yeah. of all the other no. things that are going on. No, of like, course it isn't dismissive. It's just, uh, it is what it is. Yeah. And you can't like, you have to learn how to uh, cope is not an adequate word, but it's something like cope. Yeah. Like what gives you hope? You know, uh, through the podcast, I've met a lot of cool people, a lot of people doing really interesting things. And, uh, there's some people I know that purchased some land on the peninsula the olympic peninsula it's a beautiful place if you've ever been to the olympic peninsula it's just so lush it's a rainforest it's just gorgeous mm -hmm. but there's just a lot of these people out there who have put a lot of work into getting a piece of land i know there's problems with this idea of property but doing what you can within the frameworks you got there they bought a piece of land it's in the midst of all these like clear cuts and stuff but they're just like trying to create a food forest <laughs> in the middle of all of this. They're just investing a lot of time and effort and, and they're learning the land the best they can and just trying to build something that is nurturing and fulfilling and kind of developing a more direct connection with the land. And because of the podcast, they've reached out to me and they invite me out occasionally to come and spend time with them and just like do that with them. You know, there's all kinds of people like that right now that oh, the, yeah. the fortunate thing that I, again, it's just a blessing if I could use that word, but whatever it is, the fortunate aspect of doing the podcast has been me meeting a lot of people and they've given me a sense of like, I, you know, again, we can't control that future, but in the present moment, there's a lot of really beautiful things that are happening and that mm -hmm. it is actually possible still to build community and connection with each other. I forget that, you know, I'm having my own subjective experience and it's not reflective of what everyone else is experiencing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I occasionally get a knock kind of on the bubble that I've built around myself. Like, hey, actually, this is out here too. Like, you can come in and join in on this. So that has been a way for me. It's been a balm, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have other friends that are doing similar things in different ways. It just, it feels good to know that they're kind of, in a quiet way, it's almost invisible, but they're doing an act of resistance that is trying to challenge the the dominant paradigm in many ways. And so um, I don't know if it gives me hope per se. It's like hope is a complex thing, but nonetheless, it does feel good. I know I mm -hmm. feel good when I experience that and see that. And I get a feel for those people and I get a feel for what they're trying to accomplish and it's good. That's my answer. <laughs> I dig it. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. you have any parting thoughts or web addresses or <laughs> oh sure oh yeah you want to do a little plug well, thing. i mean yeah. yeah i mean i can just drop those in the show notes too oh but yeah yeah any I'll, parting I'll just thoughts? Say, yeah i mean i'm host of last born in the wilderness you can learn i mean the base for that is my website lastbornthewilderness.com um i have over 300 episodes i think so it's like there's a lot of there's a huge catalog people can draw on with yeah the you have to movie. go way back to find the ones with the, the ones i was on was like 50 like it was a yeah, long was, time ago. It was, it, was a ways, <laughs> it was a ways back in that catalog, but um, all my information's there if people are interested in hearing what I'm in, uh, doing and they can support the work if they like it and do all that stuff. So great. Yeah. Any final wisdoms? Uh, just this, all these challenges we're experiencing is really just asking us to take care of each other more. It really is. And that's it. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, it is a co inherently complex time, for sure. Yes. But on the very human level, just try to take care of each other, and in turn, you'll be taken care of. And this isn't some woo-woo thing. This is just human stuff. It's basic stuff, you know? Can't control everything, and that's okay. You're not meant to. Just try yeah. to take care of each other. Yeah, because when everything else falls apart or doesn't work, we'll have each other. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we're at a, we're on a, there's a great distance between us, you know, like miles and miles, but you know, I can, I, I, the fact that we still have this friendship and this relationship over all this time is beautiful. And yeah. so it's a great full and circle. And to think to that here. you, our friendship started with me posting on Facebook. I just saw the most <laughs> glorious man bun. <laughs> I remember that. In oh. Twin Falls. Yep. I forgot. Now I remember. Yes, yep. you did. And, and you, uh, yeah. You know, I made you coffee. Yep. And then on, <laughs> and then there was the time on St. Patrick's Day where someone was like, Patrick, 
why aren't you wearing any green? And you're like, my name is Patrick. I do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Oh. I still say that. <laughs> yep. I know. Yeah. I can imagine you do. <laughs> yeah. It's, me. Yeah, yeah. Do what it's I a want. holiday named after a saint from centuries ago. I have nothing to do with them, but I will claim <laughs> that nonetheless. So. <laughs> Well, there's our parting words. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Do what I want. <laughs> Do what I want. <laughs> Not wearing green. <laughs> yeah, screw that. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on Hoorf. Again, it's just, I'm so happy you're doing this work. Um, thank you. I said this many times, full circle, but it's good. It's good. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Hoorf. To view the complete show notes and all the links mentioned in today's episode, or to get a full transcript of the episode, visit hoorfpodcast.com. That's H-O-O-R-F podcast.com. Before you go, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you can receive new episodes right when they're released. And if you're enjoying our podcast, I'd love to have you leave us a review in Apple Podcasts. Reviews are one of the major ways that Apple ranks their podcasts, so even though it only takes you a few seconds, it really does make a difference for us. Become a patron. For $3 a month, you can support the creation of this podcast, pay my editor, and join a community of fellow caregivers out here just doing our best. Thank you again for joining me, Elle Billing, in this episode of Horf. Until next time, be excellent to each other. Horf is hosted by L. Billing at L and Wink. Audio editing by Ricky Cummings at Ricky Poo. Music composed by Ricky Cummings. Horf is a production of L and Wink Art Studio, all rights reserved. Horf Podcast can be found on social media channels at Horf Podcast at H O O R F Podcast. I just saw the most <laughs> glorious man.